registered phenomena code. D11, object class. Alpha light. Hazard types. Immeasurable hazard. Memory alteration hazard. Containment protocols, the creation of an authority controlled tourist attraction, operating under the name Clan Herdae Phantom Piper Cave, has been deemed necessary, as part of Part PC 11's ongoing containment protocols due to its presence in local folklore and mythology. Efforts to discourage disruptive forces such as tourists, conspiracy hunters, and GOIs, are described in the induction package, page 4 distraction protocols, and include examples such as random placement of industry standard containment doors, staff who refuse to answer or act suspiciously when asked certain questions, and warnings to visiting members of the public not to enter specific caverns or touch certain objects. The actual location of Park C-11 is to be registered and secured under cover protocol Z-3, asbestos dump, with authority presence under the guise of a cleanup style operation. The entrance to Park C-11 should be sealed when not in use for testing and regular checks are to be made in Park C-11's perimeter. Lethal forces authorized to prevent entry, if necessary. However all armed personnel should not present themselves as armed in order to deter suspicion. Any instances of Park C-11-1 are to be documented by staff on site before being transferred to site. For further study, description Park C-11 is a cave network in the Ancknedham region of Northern Scotland. It has a single entrance which leads into two large interior chambers, one of which features a small pool, and around 5.1 kilometers of narrow passageways ending approximately 600 meters underground. Anomalous properties are only observed when a person, or persons, enters Park C-11 and states clearly in the Scottish Gaelic language the near, my anachag followed by any other word or phrase in any language. Persons affected by Park C-11 will become easily confused and disorientated, quickly losing sight of anyone else, and appearing to vanish from the perspective of any observers. The subject will then find themselves in a tunnel section of Park C-11, not accessible through normal means, with poor visibility. This tunnel is approximately 1.3 meters wide and is suspected to be infinite in length. Park C-11's secondary effect will take place, while the subject is within this chamber. A subject can return to the entrance of Park C-11 by turning around and walking three paces. Testing has shown this to occur regardless of how far into Park C-11 the subject has progressed. At some point, during the subject's duration within this tunnel section, the affected subject will acquire an object, known as Park C-11-1. Testing has shown this can occur in a range of different ways including finding an Park C-11-1 instance in a pocket or attached to an item of clothing, or to find it within Park C-11 position in such a way that subject would walk into it. In several cases testing subjects have emerged from Park C-11 carrying an Park C-11-1 instance in their hands but, when questioned, were unable to remember picking it up. This is document 0011-1, a partial list of RPC-11-1 instances to date. All subjects were equipped with a two-way radio headset and a flashlight. On entering, none knew of RPC-11's anomalous properties. Designation 11-1-1, subject CSD-9821. He was unaware of the anomalous properties of RPC-11 and was chosen as a control. Subject wandered around RPC-11's interior for several hours. After nothing happened, subject was ordered to return. Designation 11-1-2, subject CSD-1211. They were asked to wish for, quote, a good meal. 
Subject found a flyer for a local restaurant in their pocket after exiting RPC-11. Designation 11-1-3, subject to CSD-9972. They were requested to wish for, quote, a job. Subject exited RPC-11, holding a paycheck from the authority. Further investigation revealed subject had been hired several weeks prior as a cleaner for site, but an administrative glitch had accidentally registered them as CSD. Designation 11-1-4, subject CSD-2718. They were requested to wish for, quote, a good drink. Subject exited RPC-11, drenched in water. Designation 11-1-5, subject CSD-2341. They were requested to wish to leave RPC-11. Subject immediately reappeared at the exit of RPC-11. Designation 11-1-6, subject CSD-2213. They were requested to wish, quote, to see my daughter again, end quote. Subject found a photo of his daughter in their back pocket upon exiting RPC-11. It should be noted that subject CSD-2213 does not have any children. Designation 11-1-7, subject CSD-4522. They were instructed to wish for, quote, unlimited wishes. Subject began screaming over the supplied headset that they were unable to leave RPC-11. Subject became increasingly anxious and began running in both directions, screaming the trigger phrase with additional statements until subject became blocked in by numerous objects which had materialized around them. Subject was advised to repeat trigger phrase and asked to leave RPC-11. Subject did so, but claimed to be now under attack. Subject was asked to clarify. Subject began to scream and dropped headset. The distant sounds of someone running and the clatter of various objects were heard for several minutes until communication ceased. Designation 11-1-8, subject CSD-3678. They were instructed to wish for, quote, the ability to fly. Subject was ejected from the exit of RPC-11 at a velocity of approximately 340 meters per second. After visually tracked in subject for several minutes, MST Gamma 6, the Ardennes de Zolvon, were deployed to retrieve remains of CSD 3678. Subject was found just outside the Norwegian city of Stavanger, approximately 643 kilometers away. Designation 11 1 9, subject CSD 0961. They were instructed to wish for, quote, a hot chick. Subject exited RPC-11 holding a box of spicy chicken wings, which were promptly by subject and assisting personnel. Designation 11-1-10. Subject CSD-8121. They were instructed to wish for, quote, unlimited wealth. Subject became crushed under what is presumed to be an unlimited amount of GBP coins of varying values. Designation 11-1-11, subject CSD-2111. They were instructed to wish for, quote, a priceless object. Subject was instructed to ask for, quote, a priceless object, but instead asked for a, quote, RPC master key card and a gun, end quote. Subject charged from the exit of RPC-11 and attempted to attack several researchers with what appeared to be a Nerf gun. The subject was terminated by on-site security. A later search revealed subject to have a credit MasterCard in his back pocket. Designation 11-1-12, subject Dr. Amos. He was instructed to wish for information on RPC-11's creation, workings, and intent. Subject returned with a large book which, on closer inspection, was revealed to be a biography on the life of Dr. Amos that included a highly detailed description of his conception, birth, and the numerous revenge schemes he harbored against his old headmaster, his second wife, his third wife, his current wife, and... 
Dr. Amos described the book as, quote, a damn good read. RPC-11 was discovered during a routine investigation of local myths and legends. A man in Edinburgh who ran a poltergeist and conspiracy theory blog claimed to have found the, quote, real wishing cave, end quote, claiming he had wished for better hair and promptly revealing his premature and baldness had been cured. Agents became curious and decided to follow the subject as he promised to livestream the location of the cave and his second wish. Agents were able to isolate the subject's phone and prevent broadcast. Containment team arrived at RPC-11 20 minutes later, found no sign of the subject, but reported a statue of likeness identical to the subject with the words, quote, to be a stronger, more stable man, end quote, embedded into the plinth. <laughs> 